just got the Bodo Revolution, and we're going to put it together here in the man cave. What I got... Finally, took a little bit of trouble finding the right building and everything, but I am loaded and ready to go assemble this bad boy. All right, let's do it. All right, here it is, guys. Finally got it home. It came in two rather large boxes. Pretty well packaged. And we're going to go ahead and do the unboxing downstairs outside of the man cave because, honestly, this box right here, weighs about a million billion tons and I don't feel like lugging it upstairs. So we'll take all the parts out down here and then drag them upstairs and do the assembly. But let's see, is there anything else you guys would want to know about this? Um, I'm thinking no. A couple cardboard boxes, there's some stuff in there. Uh, let's rip it out. All right, let's bust this open. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the big box. We'll move the heavy one away. This one seriously weighs a ton. Alright. I didn't show you the side of the box, but it uh, weighs, it, it's uh, made in China. I kind of wasn't expecting that, but I guess everything is. So that's fine. 99% of the stuff in my house, I'm sure, is made in China. Even the stuff that says made in America was probably like assembled in China or the minerals came from China, who knows. Oh. This box is stable and strapped very well put together. All right. All right. Hey, well, you guys are actually seeing me get a workout today. Um, this will make some of my subscribers happy that uh, think I should stop just playing video games and actually work out. So here you go, guys. I'm doing it. This box is very light. Looks like it contains the seat. All right. Oh, I will be right. Oh man, beefcake. That is a heavy seat. All right, let's pull this crap out of the way. That is really nice quality. There's the seat. Let's see if we can recline it here. There we go. There it is, guys. Looks like it's got kind of a fake grippy carbon fiber on the side here. Um, to be honest, this looks identical to the racing seat that I had put in my Corolla back when I owned it. So, judging by the sliders and where the holes are, um, I'd have to conclude that this is actually just a real car seat. The Budo must buy these from, uh, from some manufacturer. So here we go, the logo. All right, one item unboxed. I'm already tired, I think I'll come back later and do the rest, no, I'm just kidding. Well, we'll keep going. Let's pull this out of the way. I'm gonna have to list this as a fitness video. All right, here's the big guy. This one weighs a massive amount. And as you would expect, there's a lot of little steel bits in here. 
I'm going to be honest, this looks like it's going to be far more complicated to assemble than I thought. But nothing we can't handle. So there's one piece. This stuff's a lot heavier than it looks, guys. It's a very, very heavyweight steel. Looks like it's powder coated. Oh, fun. Look at all these numbered boxes. There's nine, there's seven, 12, 10. Oh, let's see. We got a, a nine, a five, a two. I should mention each one of these feels like an absolute brick of steel. 13, eight, here. Ooh, no number. A four. Looks like some mats. Non-slip mats. These look like they're for the tabletops and the pedal assembly. Very cool. And yes, I am working up a sweat. Eleven. Three. And that's it and what appears to be a picture and instruction. Whew, I am now tired. All right, guys, I'm gonna start, uh, wow, it's all in Chinese. No wonder they sent me a video on how to assemble this. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on carting all this stuff upstairs, and uh, I'm gonna watch the video on how to assemble it, and then I'll videotape most of the assembly for you guys. All right, I hope you could, this was all in frame while I was doing it. But we'll do a quick little walk around. It's very well packaged. I mean, everything's all nice and wrapped in bubble wrap so it doesn't get damaged. All the little bits and pieces are in boxes. But I can already tell you right now, this is not going to be an easy assembly. All right, see you guys again in a few minutes due to the magic of video. All right, guys, so here's my instructions. I apologize for the noise in the background. I gotta leave the air conditioner running because it's just getting too hot in here. But one of them is in mostly English, telling me the parts manifest. And the other one's 100% in Chinese. <laughs> I can flip it around and I get English, but I don't get any of the pictures. So you have to you have to move move back and forth. But we'll figure it out. Can't be any harder than anything else I've bought from IKEA. So let's go ahead and get started. I watched the videos. Um, a little bit I may go back and reference them on and off camera but uh, there's quite a few little tidbits and pieces but since I don't have to assemble the monitor stand hopefully this goes relatively quickly all right let's get started all right I'm gonna start by unwrapping the front spline this is the very front of the simulator or the cockpit I should say it's not a simulator till you attach everything to it but anyways the bubble wrap on this thing is crazy um, <laughs> it takes a little bit of time to remove but I'm glad they do it because the finish that's on this is like phenomenal. Very, very nice. Let's see if I can get this off without destroying it. Aha! Almost success. Now, I know you guys don't want to watch a video of me unwrapping stuff, so now that you've kind of seen what the bubble wrap looks on these, I'm going to go ahead and take the bubble wrap off everything and then we'll just get started with assembly. All right, well, that was a nightmare to unbubble wrap, um, meaning they did a really good job, but it, it, was, uh, it, was, it was quite the effort. So here's the front. Hopefully it's all in frame, it's hard to tell. Um, and then it said the very first step that we need to do, according to the instructions, is open box number nine, which contains all the hardware that we need for assembly. And then the very next uh, step is to open box number 12, which contains the spline, and that's the piece that links the front together. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, it looks like box nine has the shifter. And there we go. Box of hardware. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but there's, I gotta guess there's probably a hundred little nuts and bolts in there. Um, this might take a while. And it uh, looks like we have some adjustable screw tensioner types. All right, let's get those out of the way. All right, we'll go ahead and grab number 12 here. 
This is the spline. It's hard to show on camera, but this stuff is very, very heavy duty. I mean, uh, I've used play seats before, and I can tell you right now, this is downright industrial. All right, so let's see what the instructions have to say here. So attach the right and left front half of the cockpit to the main spline. Hardware, use M8, so eight M8 cap bolts. So I gotta reference our little sheet here. Let's see here. M8 by 45 millimeters, so the big guys. So we open up our bag here and fish some of those out. I'm just gonna dump these out. All right, <laughs> that's a lot of hard work. Oh my God, I should've paid the neighbor kid to do this. Oh well, at any rate, let's dig through here and see if we can find what we're looking for. The 8x44s, they're all threads. And let's see here. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you can see this in frame on the camera. That is a lot of nuts and bolts and doohickeys. going here. I'm going to probably be lazy and not edit a bunch of this out, so uh, bear with me, people. I am not seeing the bolts that are all threads. Alright, well I already see my first discrepancy in the instructions because the instructions call for these eight by 44 millimeter bolts that are all threads. They don't have any, any of the bare spot on them. It's threaded all the way to the top. And looking at this, I don't see any that are, that are hex. I see ones that are bolts, but I don't see any that are the hex type. So I'm gonna have to conclude. That's not the right, hold on, let me see here. 8 by 45. Oh, sorry, 8 by 15. Eight inch M8 by 15 millimeter. But the only <laughs> okay, this is going to be tricky because it says in the instructions to use the M8 by 15 millimeters, but the closest size on the chart is the M8 by by 16 millimeters. And there's six of them, according to this, but over here it says I need eight. So the only one that there's eight of is the eight by 20 millimeters. All right, this is gonna be a little trickier than I thought. Well, I'm not gonna waste all the video. I'll get it figured out, and then we'll go ahead and put it together. Okay, finally figured it out. Um, there's a couple errors in the documentation. I'll, I'll make sure the company hears about it. But if you look over here on the sheet of paper, it says, Hopefully you can see this. Eight by 16 millimeter, and it says six each. Well, it's right about that, but the confusing part is in here. It says to use the M8 by 15 millimeter, eight each. So where is the M8 by 15 millimeter? It doesn't exist. So at some point they changed it out with a slightly larger bolt it looks like, so I just located those. Hopefully later on I don't find out that I'm missing the wrong bolts and have to swap them. And then the other thing was that I found out was a little tricky, and they say this in the video, so it's just a matter of listening, is make sure that when you put the bolts in, you leave them completely loose. Not a little loose, but completely loose until you get all the bolts in the holes, because if you torque one down, you can't find the hole for the other, the other ones. So you have to constantly fiddle with it. So just put everything together loose and tighten it then. So here's what the front looks like with the spline put together. It's very, very heavy. It's a lot more heavy than I thought it would be. Um, probably not something you'd cart to land parties. Not like anybody would anyways. But uh, let's go ahead and move to the next step. And I'll put it together and I'll explain it. It's a lot easier for me to assemble it and then get it on video. Because otherwise this is going to be like a four hour YouTube video. Me fiddling with stuff and trying to figure out instructions. Alright, after some pain and a dead blow hammer. Which they said we didn't need. I've got the sleds attached. That's these guys right here. So the front piece 
once it's all tightened down. Now it's got the sleds on the floor. The problem I had with this is one of these pieces here came, it was a little bit warped. This piece down here was warped. You could, you could see it. I'm sorry I didn't get it on camera. Um, so to get the sled in there and to get it all aligned with the bolt, it actually took some, you know, a little bit of coercion here. But uh, I did get it to go together. I'm not too worried at this point. It's been a little bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, it's very, very solid stuff. So I'm sure that once it's all together and everything's tensioned down, that it's going to be rock solid. All right, I'm going to move on to start assembling the back portion now that the front portion is complete. Okay, well, attaching the back rails, I found another discrepancy. Um, the bolts they give you to go through here, and I measured them against what was on the chart, say that you should have a lock washer and a flat washer on each side, but the bolt's only long enough for one flat washer on each side and the nut to get enough of the threads to bite. If you put a lock washer on there, you can't even get it started. So I don't know if they changed the size of something again before they did the thing, but I guess this is just the pains of buying something that's brand new. I'm sure they're tweaking production all the time. So far, no big blocking issues, just some things that I'm noting along the way. All right, it's starting to come together in the back here. I made a couple mistakes mixing up some pieces, but that was me just not reading instructions right. Ran into the same problem on these ones where I could only put one of the tension washers, one in the direction it says put one on both sides. But, uh... Still, it's going together. It's feeling pretty solid. I don't have everything torqued down yet. Haven't you had to use the dead blow hammer but once on that side. So uh, we're getting there. Let's keep on going. Hey, it's starting to look like a cockpit now. Got the seat attached. That was actually pretty easy. Nothing's tightened down yet. So now I think from this point on, it's just adding the tidbits like the adjustable column and the stick shift and all that stuff. So. I'll go ahead and keep taking little video bits as I put it together. At the end, we'll uh, do an overview. Okay, as you can see, I got the shifter mount attached. And it finally used one of the adjustable knobs, so you can just unscrew that. You can move it where, wherever you want your shifter. Um, it doesn't slide in and out, but honestly, it wouldn't be hard to cut that and modify it and put another, another tube in there to slide it. But the position already looks like it's really good. So, and... Uh, boy does it attach good like when you tighten that down I mean it, it is it is definitely the most rigid shifter mount I've ever seen so all right well now I gotta attach the keyboard mount to the other side all right here's something I wasn't expecting the keyboard tray is all metal also it's even got a whole subframe underneath it so this thing's like wicked heavy and rigid I really wasn't expecting that that's killer um, and then the arm here just like the shifter just slides down the tube so to swap sides for the shifter and the keyboard is simple um i also noticed this it's kind of cool so you gotta you have to mount this plate to the bottom of the keyboard and then you take out this screw right here put the plate on and put it through and then that'll uh finish the keyboard install i'm gonna do that step right now well the man cave's getting messy i've got the keyboard mount on now this is pretty cool this thing uh Moves around really easy and is super solid. So you can like move it over here, use it as an armrest if you want. Um, and also it fits perfectly across the rest. So if you, if you bring it out and around in front of you, you can bring it up and rest it right on the shifter plate over here. And if you rest it on the shifter plate, it's completely solid. I mean, it's like super solid tabletops. So you put a mouse pad and a keyboard. And I'm going to do that eventually. I'm going to put a mouse and a keyboard on it and, sh and permanently mount it. Uh, so when I'm not playing racing sims, if I want to play other like FPS and stuff like that, I can still just sit back in this chair and rock on. So we're getting close to being finished since I don't have to do the monitor stand. I might assemble the monitor stand in another video if people are really interested in it. But I can tell you right now, it's a pain in the ass to put together. I'm not going to lie. I mean, for me anyways, it might be easy for you. But once I got it put together, I mean, I can't imagine anything better built than this. The entire thing. I mean, nothing's plastic. This is all metal. All the arms metal. Everything's metal. And it weighs a ton. So I'd imagine this thing's better built than my actual car. All right. Well, let me see what's left. Uh, I think I have to finish mounting the column here for mounting the steering wheel. And a couple other little tidbits and trinkets. And once that's done, we'll... Uh, We'll actually start mounting the steering wheel and pedals and stuff to it. Cool. Getting closer. Uh, I'm getting pretty exhausted, actually. That pedal pan down here was a nightmare to install. Um, 
the bolts weren't long enough, everything was too far apart, so I had to loosen everything up again. And I know in the instructions it says to leave everything loose, but not just loose, you want to leave it like just not even like tensioned at all, no, not even touching. Um, because you have to pull these parts together really, really tightly and fast torque them down all at the same time, and then it makes the thing even stronger. So I can't really fault the design. Once it's all torqued down, I mean, the thing's indestructible. It's an Abrams tank, but oh my God, is this thing harder than shit to put together. So seriously, if you can pay someone to build it for you, do it, save yourself the hassle. But we're getting closer. I'm excited, unfortunately, for this video because this has taken me so much time. I think there's going to have to be a part two where I mount everything on it and actually play tomorrow uh, just because it's, it's starting to get a little bit late here. Um, so I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. We'll at least get it finished up so that it has the adjustable mount and then I might just set the steering wheel and shifter on it just so you guys can check it out. But uh, then we'll wrap it up tomorrow. Well guys, there she is. Still need to do a couple finishing touches tomorrow, but we'll save that for the next video. But this is looking pretty killer. It's rock solid. The seating position is pretty good. I like the adjustability. You can uh, untension these bolts right here and move the wheel up and down at any angle. Um, it definitely feels a lot more like sitting in a real car. So, can't wait to actually fire up a game and try it. But guys, I am just too freaking tired tonight. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video, which is now the first video of two. So keep an eye out tomorrow. And uh, I'm gonna clean up this huge mess. And we'll get this thing finished up tomorrow. Hopefully I got everything I need to mount the wheels. Or the wheel, the pedals, and the shifter. Like get it all hard mounted. And, uh, then we're going to plug it in play some Richard Burns Rally. Alright guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Another really quick thing to note is a lot of the pieces had rust inside the bag and on the part. But as you can see, it just wipes right off. So it must have come off of something else in the shipping process. So I was a little scared when I saw that. I was like, oh crap, it's already rusting, but it's not. It's just dust. So don't be alarmed if you get yours and it has that. Hey, thanks again everybody for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. My channel's been getting quite a few new subscribers. Uh, I really wish I could have uh, finished this video tonight and got you guys some gameplay and everything on it, but uh, I just got wiped out. But don't worry, I'll be back tomorrow with another video, and hopefully we'll have this all wrapped up and uh, test it out and give you some final thoughts. See you tomorrow.